I'd like to begin at the beginning, as it were, by asking you if you could... Uh, obviously, you have an immense passion for film. Uh, we were talking earlier today. This immense passion for film is evident in the way you speak about film. But I was wondering whether you could tell us something about when you first discovered you loved film, what kinds of films you were originally inspired by, and so forth. Um, I, I you know, I, I was raised in boarding school, Jesuit, very Jesuit and very um, difficult uh, uh, Catholic school. And cinema was, was forbidden, in a way. Uh, but I have, I have a contract with my mother when I come back to home the weekend. I can go to the video club and rent some VHS. Right. So, I, and I had that passion for, uh, for a horror movie because on the jacket you've seen all those monsters and naked women. And so I was completely uh, passionate about those jackets and it brightened my, my Im imagination in a way, you know? So I, I, I start watching horror movie a lot. And one day I discover uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre and changed my life. Right. And I decide to make movies myself. Okay. So, like you mentioned, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Were there any other like key films or key filmmakers that you uh, take to still be influential to you? Y yes. Yeah. Um, well, for me, Texas was something, but. Um, I discover a lot of stuff, you know, all the the Giallo, Argento, Fulci. I, my first love was really horror movie right. because I I project. I was very young. I was twelve, thirteen, but I, I was projecting myself and and I I, I I take the 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 camera of my father and with some friends we made we made films in the, in the forest. You know, it's very common. You know, I'm, I, I'm not the only one who, 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 who I do that, who have did that, but uh, I was very passionate. And yeah. I, I still have the same need and pleasure to make movie, to, to build movie with friends. And I love the, sh I love the set. Right. I, love the, um, I love the fever of the set. Okay. I love the sweat and, um, and the labor and... Yeah, the need, yes. So on that, do you, do you like the process more than you like the yeah, final yeah. product? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I, pr I love the process. I'm completely addicted to the process. Mm. Um, uh, you, you, f for me, just like a battleground. Mm. Uh, I need that. It's really... If, um, I'm addicted to, to the process. Okay. I, and it's, I, when it's completely messy, I'm, I'm ha super happy. <laughs> when it's muddy, rainy, everything going wrong uh, on on a boat, and I, I I feel so alive, you know. I I, I love that. I really love that. Okay. When it's when it's too easy, uh, there is a there is a problem for me. There is something wrong. There is I I need to I need to push the border and to, and Vinian for that was a good example. Believe mm -hmm. me, it was was hell, but yeah, it, very pleasant hell. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering how much that sort of the messiness, as you refer to it, translates over into the, your storytelling technique, because a lot of your films are ambiguous in their tone, like sometimes they're very dark, sometimes they're very upsetting, sometimes they're also very funny, and you can see that from the very start, like A, a Wonderful Love is both, it's so horrific, but it's also so very funny and so tragic at the same time. But But... I think Wonderful Love it, it was my was my short. It's very close to Calvert. Mm. Uh, Vignan is completely different, and I regret the lack of humor sometimes. It's yeah. sometimes well, I, I've watched a little bit, and sometimes I think it's a little bit heavy. Right. Um, so that's something I regret: the lack of humor. Uh, because Calvert, I think Calvert and Hallelujah, they they have quite funny movie. Yeah, y you can laugh a lot. Um, well, it's quite dark humor, but I, 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 can, I can, I, uh, yes, it's dark. Some, sometimes my mother used to say that, but I, I don't think so. <laughs> cool. um, there is a sequence in Wonderful Love for those of you who haven't seen it, where well, there are several sequences, such as when Lara 
the story of the film, for those of you who haven't seen it, is there's... Uh, well, would you like to tell the story of the film? No, no, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, to, without spoiling too much, Lara is uh, a woman who invites a, a male stripper to her house and stabs him in the neck with a fork and then progresses to act as if she's in a normal relationship with him. Well, there are several moments like where she's lying with his corpse, um, asking, are you going to take me to Italy? And then looks a bit disgruntled because he doesn't answer like he's going to take her to Italy. And it's that kind of thing that is certainly dark, but is also really... Funny, funny, yeah. 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 I spent most of the film like going, "Oh my god, I don't know whether I should be laughing at that or not." But is that something you strive for to make the tone ambiguous and to unsettle the viewer? Or no, it, it came it very naturally. <laughs> <laughs> it came very naturally, um, but especially with uh, what what I, what I do like it's to confront excess, you know. Mm to confront two, two different feelings, repulsion and, and attraction. Mm. And that's, that's always something that's blow my mind when I am attract and repulse at the same time. Mm. So that's, that's, that's a feeling that I love the intersection of that. Mm. That's something I, I, I'd love to, to put in front of the audience because um, I think... I'm, uh, I'm not. I'm not a, provoc a provocateur. Or straightforward. I don't want to okay. provoke, honestly, but I want to disturb. Okay. Disturbing is healthy for me. Mm. I, I can think you can see that in the, your yeah. characters. Uh, a lot of the protagonists yeah. are also villains, and a lot of the yeah. villains are, like as you'll see in Calvera, if you haven't seen it, the the lead villain, as it were, is also quite a tragic victim. But it's the same with Jeanne in. Finian, she's the hero, but also it's not clear. Yeah, she's because I, I'm just, I'm, I, I have a lot of interest in humanity. Well, just like all of us, but the deeper, you know, I, I, for me, there is always gray zone. There is no black or white. It's mm -hmm. everything. Everybody has some reasons, and and so I'm completely um, fascinated by those figures. I, I love I love to play with the cliche and to disturb the cliche. Mm -hmm. um, I I love to push the, the you know uh, uh, Georges Henri Clouseau you know the, the the great French director say say some th something I'll I'll never forget he said um, films have to be a show mm -hmm. but have to be also an aggression. Right. So they have to be entertainment but they have to be an aggression and. I, I love that. It, I think it makes sense for me because, mm. of course, there has to be, sh you know, spectacular and. But I have to put you in a, in a position that you have to react. You have to take position. Or you can change your mind. You can hate and you can love uh, two days ago, two day afters, two day afters. Sorry, but. They have to put you in a position. For me, it's terrible when people say, "Well, it's yeah, well." No, I, I, I had the idea that that the audience will leave the theater um, forgetting the movie. Sure. For, you know, you understand. Yeah. yeah. So, like, when you're making the f a film, how conscious are you of the audience? Like, are you are you thinking about how they'll react while you're? I, I didn't. I <laughs> I didn't for Calvert and Vignan, but after Vignan, I try to, I try to, I try to imagine what the audience could, could how they could um, receive the film, yeah. and it bring me, it bring, it brings me to, uh, to um, very bad experiences, okay. uh, but now uh, you know I have a little bit more experience, so um, you learn from your failures, you know, okay. you learn from. Uh, Vignan, in, Vignan was was uh, is, is I give everything on that movie. It's a very sincere and and very utopic uh, in a way uh, movie, because we are we, we were very cheap. We were very cheap on money, mm -hmm. and I have that great expectation. You know that that golden dream that I wanna I wanna reach, and mm -hmm. and I have to fight against, of course, the money, of the, the technical issues, and. Um, Every aspect of the movie, but um, it's been it's been really long time for me to. to I, I I didn't watch it, and 
I can see why well, that, 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 that yeah. uh, but you know, in a way, I, when you give everything, it's, it's, um, well, it's, it's, you, you learn from that. You, you learn from that. You, you, you need to, at one point you need to learn about the audience. You need to you need to to, to build to build something through th through the audience. Mm -hmm. But you don't feel like because obviously it's a lot of it's very playful and you've got you've got to tread the fine line between hero and villain and comedy and sadness and so forth. There are some filmmakers who clearly like Michael Haneke, for instance, who seek to play with the audience or. Yes. Rather than just challenge them, this to manipulate them. So you, you don't approach the filmmaking. No, anymore. because I'm a more impulsive director. Um, I'm a very impulsive man in general, yeah. but I'm a very impulsive director. Okay. And Michael Haneke, or those great directors, they are brain director. Right. They can plan everything, mm -hmm. piece per piece per piece. You know, that's why they are so great. Mm -hmm. I'm completely an impulsive. That's why I try to. To, to dominate my impulsion sometimes, but I can change, I can switch very quickly uh, based on my impulsion. So, I, especially a film just like Vignan, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, so I, I, I try to, I prepare a lot, I think a lot, but on the set, I always follow my instincts and my impulsion. And sometimes my impulsion brings me brings me in the wrong way, in the wrong path. It depends of, you know, it, it could depend of, I, I, it's an it's inner fight. Right. It's an okay. inner fight, you know, you need, you need to fight yourself. Okay. To, to, but just like, just like everybody, I think. Okay. This is one of the things I wanted to ask you, and now maybe you've already answered this in a way, is uh, the one thing that really characterizes your films is, is the voice of them. They're very, like, even though, they're very different from <coughs> each other. They've got very different tones. They're all very atmospheric. And one, one thing I was going to ask you is whether you go in to intentionally build an atmosphere, and if so, then what do you do to build an atmosphere? Yeah, but the, the atmosphere is for me is very important because um, I'm not a realist. Okay. I hate realism in cinema. I hate realism in life, in arts mostly. In art, I think it's terrible. And that idea that art has to be real mm -hmm. to make us feel is very something that bothers me a lot. Um, today, you know, even the modern art, contemporary art, everything has to be real. real. Uh, people make constat, make statement, real statement, and and I'm just interested by poetry. Yeah, uh, that's my only obsession. That's that's. So I, I try to, I, I try, I try to create a mood, an atmosphere to, to reach a kind of um, a, 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 a poetry way of of declining story. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very immersive. It's very um, uh, contrasty all the time. Um, for example, Vignana, I, I was, and I think it's a mistake. I, I was very reluctant to create an empathy for the couple. I was very distant, I was very distant. If I, if, if I was able to shoot Vignan today, I would be probably, especially in the first uh, 30 minutes, I would be completely different. Mm -hmm. I would go completely different. But I was very reluctant to, 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 go, to go close because I thought it was a little bit vulgar, a little bit too easy, especially after the tsunami. And mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time in Thailand. I, I spent almost, uh, uh, more than a year there, so uh, so I was reluctant to go there. But um, I, what I was obsessed is to create an atmosphere, to create a mood, even for the set. When when people enter in the set or the actors enter in the set, they change. They do, something change, something alterate. Even the technician, everything. Just like for me, it's. Because, because probably I had a, a kind of spiritual relationship to to cinema. Um, for me, shooting in films is not cosmetic. It it means something. It's 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 something. Okay. Um, you, you, you understand? Mm -hmm. It's uh, so mood and atmosphere are prevail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, to what extent do? You 
does location help you to tell the story? Because all your films are set in very, well, apart from the, the Ardennes films, are set in very different locations, like yeah. Message from the Kings and the Urban Jungle, and this is on islands. And uh, like, what comes first for you in something like Vinyan? Is it the, the idea for the story and you find the right location to tell it? or did the, No, the, the story one? first. The, I, I write the story and then I, I'm going to location and scouting. And scouting for me, it's, um, it's a major process. Mm -hmm. it, I, I drive everybody crazy with, with, with scouting because I'm very, very, very um, difficult on, on location. Because I'm obsessed with, with shine, shiny uh, texture and... And so I, I, and also, also I want to penetrate. Uh, maybe it's silly, I don't know, but I want, I want to penetrate into a room or to a house or to a building, and feel something. Yeah, sure. It has to be soulful in a way. Mm -hmm. It has to be receptive. <laughs> Sorry if I sound just like Jodorowsky, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it, it certainly pays off because, like, it the fi the films feel very different because. Yeah. There's a, evidently there's a lot of attention paid yeah. to location. I, for, for my, my, my goal is to find a location which is practically uh, good, mm. and I can I can you know just paint and and to and to um, uh, improve improve the texture sure. and play with practically nothing, just some some water and smoke. Okay. I'd like to throw it open to the audience at this point if anyone's. Got a question you would like to ask for Greece? Maybe, maybe just to say you're a very impulsive and intuitive director working on atmospheres, etc. Could you talk and, and really addicted to the set? Uh, could you talk on your work with the actors? How, how you create this thing with the, this complicity with the, with the actors in um, this process? I, I, I'm very close to the actors. I'm very, very close. I'm, um, I, I, during the set, I'm practically live with them. You know, share everything with them. Um, I, we feed on each other really much. But it's, it's, for example, during during the shoot of Vinian, uh, Rufus and Emmanuel has uh, doesn't doesn't belong very good. It has a, just like in Alleluia between uh, Lola Duenas and Laurent Lucas, it was a nightmare. They, they, they hate each other. So I, it was, and they had to play with mad love. So it was sometimes it was complicated. But, but I'm, not, I'm, I'm absolutely not the kind of director who, you know, who, who wants to intrigue. And I'm very straightforward. And I behave just like a kid, you know, just like a happy kid during, during the shooting. I'm jumping all the time. I never, never want to go to bed, you know. I, I want to shoot, I want to, I want to have fun. So I think my energy is, is communicative, you know, to the actors and the actors wants to do and, and I push them, I push them, I push them. I exhaust them. I exhaust everybody in a way, but it's mostly the actors. Does anyone else have a question? You said that uh, you had to fight with a lot of things, including budget and location and stuff in Vinyan. So I wonder, since I consider this your, your well, maybe not best, but certainly personally favorite film of yours, um, I wonder how much of this film is actually what you wanted to do. In other words, did you have to compromise a lot? How much of this film is what you set out to do? Were there any scenes or stuff that you had to that you weren't able to do? I, it was 100% my movie. But in fact, I, I, it was a long time ago. It was my second feature, and I wasn't, I wasn't that experience that I have now. But um, we, we, that's a three million movie, Euro. And at the beginning, it was, the budget was four. But we had to face the Black Friday, though, so the, the, the death of the, the UK um, tax shelter, uh, three, <clears throat> three weeks before shooting. And I never put that in my mind. All, all, all the producers said, Fabrice, 
you won't be able to do exactly what you want. You won't be able to do all the shots you want. And I say, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, okay. But I never hear them. I never integrate that, that, those, those problems. So I had that obsession of the long shots, you know, especially at the end, uh, because I was obsessed at that time with Soy Kuba by Kalatazov. I was obsessed with that movie. And, and I wanted to make some big wire, to build some big wire into the jungle and may, be able to do those, those big, big, big shots. And in fact, I forget, to my point of view, to, I forget to be closer to the actor, to be maybe to reach or to push the soul, to be close, especially my, my biggest, my biggest um, regret is probably the, 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 first 20, the first 20 minutes. I would love to add some more scene between them, the problematic of the couple, the grief, the, you know, to be more attached to the couple. But I was so obsessed shooting by, into the jungle. I was so obsessed <laughs> to making my Fitzgeraldo movie, you know, and, and to be alone, surrounded by obstacle and, and, and conflicts into the jungle. So uh, I, I, that's something I, I, I forget. And, but that's the way it is, you know. It's the way it, but in fact, I did exactly the movie I, I, I wanted, but we worked just like hell. It was in very, very, very intense. But at the end, when I was in the editing room, I said to the producer, I would love to, uh, to, to reshoot the beginning, to reshoot that scene, that scene, that scene. And I said, we have, we have no money. So. Does anyone else have a question? You said you write the script first, uh, so I wonder um, how long is this script? Do you write a long and elaborate story, or do you improvise a lot when you are on the spot? I I I, I write. Uh, I, I, sometimes I, I have co I have uh, screenwriters who work with me, but on the set I improvise a lot. You know, I'm I'm not the kind of director who shoots who shoots shoots a script. I, I don't I don't care to to direct a script. Uh, when I'm, I'm based on the script, but I need to go deeper or to, and to push the limit or to, to, to improvise. So I try to improvise a lot, especially when I have the collaboration of the actors. So you have a script and then you go along with the script and then you improvise or you have just an idea and then you start shooting? No, I have a script. I always have, the, I have a script. And, and then, then, and then I, I try to push the boundaries. I try to improvise. I, I, I can, I can add a scene. I can modify. I, I can change a scene. I can, but it's not, it's not a loony. It's not. Uh, I talk to the actors, and and we change stuff. Especially, I'm not very, I'm not very um, uh, monomaniac with the with the lines. Uh, no, 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 I didn't mean the lines. Yeah. No, but uh, you want to tell a story. Yeah. And how much of this is uh, coming, is being created in the editing room? I'm sorry? In the editing room? Yes. Yeah, we rebuilt everything in the editing room. And because... Re rebuilt? We built, we built everything in the, the in the editing room, yeah. Based on the script, but sometimes it doesn't work the way you wrote it and... And once again, you know, I, f for example, Binion was a very f much free film. It's probably the, the, it's probably the most free and more improvised film I, I, I've, I've did. Uh, Calvert was much more structured, much more written, also because I spent five years to, to wait for shooting that movie. To, to Why was that? Because it was long, because it was, I didn't get, it was my first feature and nobody wants to produce and finance it. So I have to fight during five years. Yeah, it was a long way. But I, I, I had, I had um, all the plan, I have all the shots in my head at that time. Vina was much more improvised. It was much, much was a, a blast of energy, a, a blast of, almost a blast of testosterone in a way. You know, it was, it was a, it was a, a kind of a, 
BKL. Um, of course, I, what I do, I write, and then I storyboard everything. But the, the storyboard for me is not something that um, will occur. Uh, for you know, it it it's just an, uh, a way for me to 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 going to be able to going through all the movie visually. But, but from the beginning, did you have the idea to shoot it in Thailand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How come? Because uh, well, that's a long story, but I'm I'm gonna make short. Uh, for Vinyan, the, the 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 first idea was to make um, uh, a remake of a Spanish very cold uh, Spanish movie it was. Who Can Kill a Child by Serrador. I don't know if you know, you know that movie. Um, so we didn't get the right. And it's, it's about a couple who arrive in an in a, in a, in a island in Spain and, and they, have to they have to face a, a bunch of wild kids. And um, we didn't get the right of that movie. And I love the idea of that. Um, because I know the the, the, the Serrador's film, and, and I said, wow, that's, that, that could be great. But my producer want to, wanted to make a very straightforward horror movie, a very commercial movie. So finally, uh, the, the tsunami hit, and a few months after, I said, well, maybe I have an idea. It could be a couple who have lost a kid in, in Thailand, and, and then, uh, and then we, can, we can start from that point. And my producer bring me to Thailand, so I discover another world, Thailand. It was it was amazed for me. I was very. I fall deeply, deeply in love with 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 Thai people, and um, and I spend a lot of time there. Then I write the script, um, and also the fact that the Western couple face another culture, especially with the ghost, the uh, the relationship with death, uh, the, the, everything is changed there. So I was very enthusiastic with that idea to make that movie in Thailand, in fact, yeah. Thank you. One of the things that you've just mentioned there, or you've mentioned it several times in passing, is that you didn't set out to make something like a straight horror film, but like, well, do you consider yourself a genre filmmaker, or do you consider yourself someone who's actively playing with the boundaries of genre? Yeah, yeah, but because when, when, when the idea, the idea was to make a remake of, of, uh, of Serrador's movie, but mm -hmm. we are far from that. Um, because they wanted, at the time, you know, uh, Calvert was released. Calvert had a kind of a small buzz and, and uh, you know, Wild Bunch. And some of the producer wanted to, for me, to make a, a very straightforward horror movie and, and to make <laughs> some money. <laughs> but, but for them, you know, I made Vignan and it was, it was a <laughs> very terrible for them. Um, what's the, what's, what was the question? Sorry. I was just wondering, like, could, um, what I'm thinking really is that some of your earlier films like, are more yeah. aligned with horror, and more recently you've made a few what, what were closer to action films, yeah. and whether you consider yourself to belong to one genre more than another, whether your heart's with no. one. Or... <laughs> I, you know, it's always difficult for me when, when people say, wow, you are a genre filmmaker, or you are a horror filmmaker. No, I'm a filmmaker. I love cinema, you know, from e, A, A to Z. So pff, I, I just like, I hit, I watch all kind of movie. It could be Bergman to Jess Franco, you know. I, my religion is cinema, so, you know, I, I, I absorb a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I try to be very personal. And I realize that today everybody has, you know, especially the exploitant and the distributor, they need to have some, some niche, some, some. That's, I think that's my strength, but that's my weakness also. But that's the way it is. So do you find that um, we'd say some of, like message from the king, for instance? Do, do you find that? of critics being quite resistant to you moving into a different... Uh, yeah, but Message or? from the King was different because Message from the, from the King was really... Uh, you know, I wasn't hired that, that, uh, for, for that film. They call me, they say, well, we have that script, read it, uh, I, I read it, I say, well, if you want, if you want something very singular, personal, uh, I'm your guy. If you want to take and like, I'm not your guy. Mm -hmm. And they say, oh, you are, your, you are yeah, American bullshit. They say, you are, you are <laughs> the one. And I, I, it's, been, it's been a great shoot, but 
at the beginning of the post uh, the post production is you know money money takes 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 over True. so okay. and uh, i'm not ashamed of the movie but it's not completely my movie True. Uh, for example i i dig much more uh, Teresa palmer uh, character uh, that character was much more boldy edgy um, d deep very much more deep and and they 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 Get, they get so a great part of it, and I don't like all the the idea of it, the flashbacks and 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 the, and the, and some of the quick uh, quick aspect of the third act. But uh, that's the way it is, you know. That, that's but it's that it's significant also uh, the way I, I work. It's I would love to find a way to to the. Uh, I find a way to uh, to the audience in in a with a much more commercial movie, but we, not at any cost. Yeah. You understand? I, I need to I need to be I need to feel I need to I need to care about the movie. Mm -hmm. I need to feel about it. Uh, that's why you know today there is a lot of director who can do that 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 that. I'm I'm too committed. Sure. I'm too committed. Okay. It's just like. In every aspect of my life, I, I'm always committed. I, I, can, I cannot be light right. when I do something. I was thinking, you know, uh, so many of your characters, uh, I mean, I, I see most of your films as being love stories of one kind or another anyway, like yeah, uh, sibling love. Yeah, love I'm, I'm talking about that, that. exactly. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm obsessed with the idea of love and, and uh, alienation of love and, mm. you know, the dominant dominé you know mm. I, i'm obsessed with that idea i think it's 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 it's, it's amazing it's mm. there is no end to that i know your characters seem to be obsessed with the love that they can't have and and so forth anyway, yeah, and yeah. do you think that's a reflection of your personality yeah. uh, probably yeah I'm a, I'm a bit i'm a bit obsessive also yeah. <laughs> i think we've got time for one more question if anyone's got one And uh, because, okay, these uh, films are still from the time when it was shooting on film, but you're still shooting on film and on 16 millimeter. Yeah, but as I, as I, as I told you, um, it's it part of the, um, of the magic. It's part of the, um, of the process. I, I always thought that uh, filmmakers are alchemists and they, they change word into and I think the films gives us um, a very organic and very sensual way to see our own reflection, our own humanity, our own, our own desperation and our own uh, greater uh, greatness, uh, whatever. But I think films... There is a there is a limbo there. There is a there is a shadow. There is a there is a smoke there, a poetical smoke. You understand what I mean? It, 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 digital, it's too. There is. It's, it smells nothing. <laughs> you see, it smells nothing. It's it's too. It's it's just like uh, we 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 talk about that uh, uh, during the lunchtime, but. Just like pornography today for me, you know, um, pornography smells nothing. It's terrible. It's uh, pff, it's clinical. In the seventies or the eighties, I'm not nostalgic, but you can smell. The, there is a sensuality. There is a there is a, a mood. There is a, a joy. Um, yeah. And you're shooting the next one on film of as course, well. Of course, of course, yeah, yeah. Will you tell us a little bit of what we are awaiting? Hopefully, maybe already next year. <laughs> <laughs> next year, I don't know, but um, it's, it, I'm closing. I'm, I'm closing my my little trilogy after Calvaire, Alleluia. is going to be the third part, and it's going to call Adoration, and it's going to be a love story between a young boy, very innocent, very, uh, yeah, very. Very innocent, and uh, 
he has that passion for 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 a girl uh, from his age, but it's, the girl is she has a lot of problems. She's a schizophrenic or kind of very heavy disease, mentally sick, and he's gonna do everything to save her. So it's got, I hope it's gonna be very emotional, and we're shooting this summer. So the idea there is, is, with that movie, it's it's to it's to comp well, that's an idea that's you know it's it's a little bit early to, to talk about that but the idea is to keep everything that I learned so far but to be a little bit more emotional because it's gonna be a, just like a documentary just like a portrait of that young boy and that young boy you know he, he has no distance he doesn't understand why 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 is his love is so sick and and difficult, and he gonna embrace everything. He, he gonna he, he's gonna give everything to her for her until until the last moment. Well, it's gonna be something. Until things go very badly wrong. <laughs> yeah, well, it's gonna be it's gonna be sad. Yes, it's an, it's another a, lo a love story again, but with an obsessive. Yes, but that that makes sense with the with the with the Ardennes trilogy, you know, mm -hmm. because it's it's about mad love, but it's always about mad love. I was just wondering to what extent is are uh, because all the characters seem to be obsessed with the kind of love that either they can't quite grasp or is gone from them, and they're trying to replace in some way. I was wondering to what extent is love more of a burden than a pleasure for the characters in? It's in both. It's both, but uh, you know, honestly, I think all the great horror movies are always about mad love. Mm -hmm. Every, yeah, look Frankenstein, look Les Yeux Sans Visage, Eyes, Eyes Without a Face. Mm -hmm. There is many, many examples. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> it is, in a way, Project it's a mad, it's, yeah, it's a story about that guy who has, um, He's alone. <laughs> he's, no, honestly, uh, he's really alone, and he's. I I can I, I have I can feel for for uh, for Letterface a little bit, but that's because I love him so much. But uh, he touched me. He moves me. He, he's a kind of Frankenstein. Uh, he has that. He has that breach. But I agree that that is not a strictly uh, mad mad uh, love story. But the, um, it's for me the poet. For me, it's a perfect movie because you, you can see that movie as an exploitation movie, but you can see that movie as an art movie. You can see it as a Bunuelian movie. It's very Bunuelian, uh, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and also it's very pol political. It's it gives you a flavor of of the United States in 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 those years, and it's. It didn't age. It's still it's, it's so powerful. S still today. I I show that that I showed a movie to my kid. It was it was in shock. Okay. Well, I think we've, we're about out of time. So I'd just like to say, and please join me in thanking again our guest. Thank you. Thank you very Bells. much. Thank you.